Okay, we'll now call the meeting to order, and we'll begin with the adoption of the agenda and AB 361 finding. So, uh, would that be Alex for the 361 finding? Yeah, I can update that as okay. well, too. Um, this is just continuing the resolution adopted late um, of 2021, um, and it's just you're making the finding that uh, the COVID regulations and health concerns um, are still of matter, so we'll continue the AB 361. That way we can continue, <clears throat> excuse me, virtual meetings for both GA and committee. Okay, thank you. This is uh, John Blay. I'll make the motion. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? Second. Yeah. Chairman Peters. Aye. Vice Chair Breeden. Here. Yes. Director Rotora. Yes. Director Itnayer. Yes. Director Vallejo. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Our next item is item number three, public comment on closed session. Do we have anybody wanting to speak to any of our closed session items? Okay, seeing none, we will adjourn to closed session. If you, and if everybody could go ahead and silence their cell phone, or their, uh, excuse me, their uh, you, Zoom uh, profiles. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, board to reconvene, and we'll begin with a report from GA Council on actions taken in closed session. Regarding the items listed in the agenda, uh, agenda item four, uh, either of the four items, there's no reportable action. That the, includes the closed session report. Thank you. Okay, next, I would like to ask you all to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And lastly, for item five, uh, could we please call the roll? Chairman Peters. Here. Vice Chair Breeden. Here. Director Itnayer. Here. Director Rotora. Here. Director Vallejo. Here, and uh, just everyone, please remember to speak into your microphones because they are very sensitive. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to item number six, public presentations. Uh, this portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the board on any matter not on this agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the board. No action will be taken on non-agenda items unless authorized by law. Comments are limited to three minutes per person. Please state and spell your name before making your presentation. Are there any members of the public that would like to speak under public presentations? Okay, seeing none in the room and none on the phones. Okay. That will take us to item number seven, and that is board member comments. And I will just uh, go through the list and uh, check in with each board member. Uh, Vice Chair Breeden, did you have any comments? And Scott is on vacation, so I am here. Thank you. We're glad to have you here today. <laughs> uh, Director Rotora? Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Uh -huh. Chairman. I have three inputs. Um, the first one is the uh, Water District sent a letter to the GA chairman requesting future GSP annual reports be approved by the GA board prior to submittal to DWR. The Water District staff had previously attempted to work with the GA staff to get this item on the agenda. Uh, the Water District staff reached a roadblock with the GA staff. Um, I have serious problem with GA staff controlling policy. Uh, this is not their job. The Water District is therefore appealing directly to the GA chairman to put the item on the agenda. So that's what that letter that you received was all about. And 
we uh, uh, are awaiting your response. Um, item number two is the Department of Water Resources identify 19 deficiencies or corrective actions, if you prefer, that need to be addressed in the next release of the GSP. Some of those deficiencies need to be corrected prior to the release of the next annual report. I would like to see a plan and a schedule uh, with budget uh, developed that shows the deficiencies are fixed in a timely manner. I would also like to see Stetson address the progress on the schedule on a monthly basis. Uh, now, I, I know that uh, um, the PAC is working with the staff, putting a, a schedule together, um, but I think that's been going on now for several months. Um, my feeling is we need to get the schedule to a point where it's usable, and we need to start using it. That's number two. Number three. Uh, the GA is three years behind in being able to measure the change to groundwater and storage. This is a primary sustainability indicator and should be a, a high priority goal. I would like to see Stetson provide monthly updates on the progress toward this goal until we get this critical issue under control. And that was it. Thank you. It, thank you. Um, to, to your first point, can staff tell us when that report will be coming back before the board? The next annual report would likely come before the board in February of 2023. Okay, perfect. So would you like to take it back up when that board is coming, or when that report's coming before the board? Well, well I, I, I think, uh, what we need to do is have a determination now as to how we're going to handle the release procedure. Um, we, 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 um, it's important that the board get involved with assuring that the quality of the report is what this board wants the quality to be. So um, what, we, what we would like to see is um, an expression of, yes, we are going to have a yes, no, up, down approval on the report before it's released. We were promised uh, at the last year report that the deficiencies that were identified in the comments would all be corrected in the final release. And quite frankly, I'm maybe 10% at most of the comments were actually uh, included in the final report. And, and I want to make sure that we're actually reviewing the final report after it's been reviewed and that we approve what actually goes out, not just a draft. Thank okay. Um, uh, it's my, been my understanding that this is a ministerial report from staff, not, not something that the board would typically vote on. Um, no, uh, we, Water District uh, totally disagrees with the fact that it's administerial or it's a staff to staff report. We, we have one and only one progress report from the water, from, pardon me, from the GA to the member agencies as well as the public uh, in terms of what progress we've, been, we've made over the last year and how we've spent their money. Uh, so the public as well as the GA membership deserve to have a high quality report go out that's been reviewed and been authenticated by the board. It's not a ministerial um, document at all. Okay. Um, are it's, by the way, it's what we say it is, by the way. We, we don't respond and we don't uh, uh, react to the staff they react to us. We tell them what it is. Correct, but we're also not the ones out taking the measurements. We have to rely on staff to compile a report. <laughs> so I'm not sure where you want me to go with this. If you want to make a motion to... Well, what the letter is requesting is that it be put on the agenda so we can have a full discussion. And of course, our position is it needs to be a formal document released from one state agency going to another state agency. It's not a staff report going from one staff to another staff. It's 
our report. It's the board's report. It's not the staff's report. Okay. So are you, are you making a motion to put that on? Yes. I would like that to be on the agenda. May I ask a question? Yes, I'm are sorry. You, are you looking for the procedure to change, or are you looking for how, how it is released? Because I'm not sure I'm they're, seeing they're the, the distinction same, there. They're the same, I think. I'm, You're saying it shouldn't be released until this board has approved it, so nothing goes to the public until this board has approved it? You no, know, in terms of the release, it's the release that goes, it officially goes to DWR, making it our board's document. The, the public last time did review the report. That's right. And, and Stetson got a number of comments in, very valid comments, and we were told that they would be corrected, and when we got the final out, by the way, the board did not look at the final before it went out. We looked at the draft, and the corrections were not made. So uh, I, we want to guarantee that what, is, what goes out from the board represents what the board wants it to be, and it's the quality that we want it to be. Okay. Are there any well, other? We can go into a lot of discussion next month when we, it's on the agenda. Okay. Are there any other comments on this? Okay. Um, seeing none, uh, is, is there a, uh, actually, uh, Mr. Decker, this is just uh, time for board comments right now. I understand that. Uh, I'm a PAC member, a TAC member, however, and it, what I have to say is pertinent to your discussion. I'm part of your team. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, the TAC did receive the report last, uh, this last report. However, the time available was short, and uh, we also uh, had no chance to see uh, what changes would actually occur. Uh, I personally wrote about seven pages of detailed comment, and most of my comments were not incorporated, and they were not frivolous comments. There needs to be some process where the actual inputs uh, from the board and from um, the TAC and perhaps even from the PAC uh, are incorporated so your report actually represents uh, the best we can put forward. I agree completely with Stan's comments that it, this is not an administerial report. It, it's our annual report to document what we've done. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I just want to remind everyone to speak into their microphones. Oh, thank you. Okay, so Director Rator, would you clarify what your motion is exactly? Is it to bring this back as an item for discussion next month or to bring the annual report to the board for approval and when we receive it next year? Well, you know, part of that addresses schedule issues to make sure that it is, goes to the PAC, to the TAC, and to the public in a, in a timely manner so that we can um, get all the reviews in. And of course, as important, those reviews will identify areas that need to be changed, and, and, and Stetson needs time to change them. This last year, uh, even though we were told, oh yeah, there's plenty of time to make the changes, it turns out the changes didn't make made. So I think the problem really was, there wasn't time. So uh, there's, there's there's a, a critical issue regarding scheduling uh, and making sure that the draft report gets out for review at the proper time, that the comments get in at the right time. Stetson actually has time to review those comments and then talk to the people who have commented and make the appropriate changes. And that it cannot be done in a two or three week period like they were thinking it could be done. It, it didn't happen. So okay. we, we, we need to make sure that the scheduling associated with getting all the process done gets done, and then it gets to the board, 
and we can stamp it after the technical people have looked at it, agreed to it, and everything is copacetic. Now, that's not happened in the past. We have not reviewed any of the first three final reports before they went out. And, and as a board member and someone who wants to be responsive to the public as well as the other members of this group, uh, that's, that's sad. We, we need to be responsible and, and take responsibility for that document. I, I understand so what you're John, saying. This is, oh, sorry, John, Director Vallejo. At this, point, at this point, we should just give direction to staff to agendize it so we can actually discuss it and, and address the issues Mr. Retora is, is presenting. And uh, seems like we should move on at this point from, from this issue. Agreed. So can we, so you're, you're asking, your ask is to direct staff to bring this back with a timeline and what what that process will be so we can yes, get this discussion. To, to make sure that we get the report done uh, in a timely okay. manner and that Got it. we uh, that everybody has time to review it, corrections mm -hmm. made, and then we will put our stamp of approval on the final, not the draft. Understood. Thank you. Are there any other comments from directors? Okay, seeing none, we will now move to item number eight, and that is the consent agenda. Uh, that is uh, 8A, approve minutes of board meeting April 13th, 2022, and 8B, approve expenditures, and that is for Stetson Engineers, Regional Government Services, Capital Core Group, and California Rural Water Association. Is there anybody from the public that would like to comment on the uh, consent agenda? Okay, seeing none in the room, uh, we'll go to the phones. Uh, caller, go ahead. Yeah, I'm seeing seeing green lights on there. Do we have do we have a caller on the line? Okay. No, nobody on the phones. Okay, is there any comment from the board on consent agenda? If not, is there a motion to approve? Okay. This is Jeff Baldwin. Motion. Okay. Go ahead. We have, we have for a motion. Yes. So move. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we had a well, Director Breeden. Motion, is that a second? Second. Okay, thank you. I didn't hear her. Oh, no problem. Sorry. <laughs> Chairman Peters? Aye. Vice Chair Breeden? Aye. Director Itnayer? Aye. Director Retora? Aye. Director Vallejo? Aye. Okay, the board will now consider item number nine, legislative matters, and this includes item 9A, wastewater treatment plant state budget request as well as item 9B, Senate Bill 1395, Defense Community Infrastructure Project. And will that be uh, CapCore, I believe, presenting that? Yes, Mr. Chairman, this is Michael McKinney with Capital Core Group. Greetings to the board and to the members of the audience that are watching. We are requesting support for two legislative items in California, the first one being the state budget request that was uh, provided to the state legislature by the city of Ridgecrest for its wastewater treatment plant. That request of $5 million was uh, put to Senator Grove and assembly member Fong in March, and it was approved by both members in April of uh, 2022 and is being submitted to them right now for their review. We are asking for a letter of support to the speaker, to the Senate president pro tem, as well as to the chairman um, regarding that. This, uh, this budget request, of course, helps them finalize and finish the wastewater treatment plant, which is the feed water for the water recycling plant. So it has direct benefit to the uh, groundwater authority. And we ask for your consideration of that support. Okay, thank you, sir. Are there any comments from board members before we go to public comment? I think it's really important that we recognize that our elected officials understand and support where we're coming from, and this is needed 
both for city residents, but also for those people who live in the valley. And I, I urge us to go ahead and write this letter and do it. Thank you, Director Breeden. Are there any other comments from directors? Uh, I certainly agree that it's a good thing to do. We need to push forward, get all the free money we can. Great. Okay, um, are there any members of the public that would like to comment on this item? Seeing none, are there any on the phones? Uh, none on the phones. Okay, is there a motion to approve this item? So moved. Second. I heard you that time. <laughs> Thanks for speaking into the mic. Chairman Peters? Aye. Vice Chair Breeden? Aye. Director Itnayer? Aye. Director Retora? Aye. Director Vallejo? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Our next item is item number 10, board discussion and possible abandonment of the following program due to lack of funding. And I believe we'll be hearing from Carol on this one. I uh, Mr. Chairman, did you miss SB 1395 or did you approve both motions? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I was taking that as a, a whole item. Uh, I may have mis oh. misconstrued that. We can go back and uh, do item 9B I apologize. if I, if I they misunderstood are. that. Yeah, they are two items. I apologize for interrupting, Mr. Chairman. Um, if I may? Yeah, yes, please go ahead. Okay. Senate Bill 1395 by Senator Bates and Senator Melendez would enact the California Defense Communities Infrastructure Program. This is patterned after the fa uh, Federal Defense Community Infrastructure Program and would essentially be a state feeder grant for the federal program. It adopts all of the various um, implementation guidance from the uh, federal grant, which is military value, creating resiliency or enhancing the quality of life. It, it does benefit the groundwater authority in that the uh, interconnection project and the water recycling program uh, plant would be eligible for a Cal DCIP grant. Um, potentially as soon as next year, as the grant includes planning dollars and not just construction dollars, which are included in the federal program. Uh, there is one issue, well, actually there are two issues and we are asking for amendments on behalf of the city of Ridgecrest. One, it is only open to disadvantaged communities define and defines that as communities that are less than 80% of the median statewide household income. The city of Ridgecrest does not um, fit into that guideline and it is only open to program or projects that are not located on federal lands. That is very similar to the amendment that we are currently seeking in the National uh, Defense Authorization Act. And so we are just asking the legislature to consider um, modifying the criteria to allow for Ridgecrest to be eligible in both areas. Uh, the authority, because it spans a different geographical area than the city actually is, as we understand it, eligible under the program and we can go from there. We are asking for a straight support letter from the authority and we have asked and received a letter from the city that is support if amended. And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you. Are there, I'll bring it back to the board for any comments on 9B. We need to do it. Great. Let, let's support it and go forward. Okay. Thank you, Director Rotora. Any other directors? Okay. Seeing none, are there any members of the public that would like to speak on 9B? So move. Okay. I think we have somebody calling in on the phones right now. Uh, caller, go ahead. Mm. Go ahead, caller. Uh, caller, are you still there? Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. This is Renee Westerlusk. I'm calling in um, to say that I support this bill. Great. Thank you. 
are there are there any other callers? Okay, seeing none. Uh, we had a motion from uh, Director Rotora. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. Chairman Peters. Aye. Vice Chair Breeden. Aye. Director Itnayer. Aye. Director Rotora. Aye. Director Vallejo. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, now we'll go back to uh, item 10, and that is the board discussion and uh, possible abandonment of the following program. And for that, I will turn it over to uh, Carol. Hi, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as directed at the last meeting, uh, the GA sent a letter to the Water District asking if the Water District uh, would support the following program using replenishment fees. Um, we received a letter in response from the Water District just yesterday. That letter should now be in your packet. Um, the, the bottom line is that the district does not support the use of replenishment fees for the GA's following program, and they, uh, they list a variety of reasons. At this point, uh, this, this answers our question, but staff is not recommending any particular action at this point, but open for discussion. Okay, thank you. And with that, I'll bring it back to the board for comments. Um, I, I agree with what she said, but also I would like to note that uh, the letter sort of implied that at one point in time we were in favor uh, of using the replenishment fee. And I think if you look at the letter, it's pretty clear that we never uh, indicated that we had uh, um, and any reason to use replenishment fees. Uh, so we, we have not changed position. Our position is what it's always been. Um, but but the end result is what she said. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Director, Vice Chair Breeden. Yes, I have a, I have a question. Uh, does that mean that you are changing the, the representation, not changing, you are addressing the representation of what you said, not necessarily that you're writing this as a letter of disagreement. Because there is, there's two concepts. One, you don't think you were represented fairly. And two, you don't believe in this. What is it that you are we, asking? We, <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, but to make a long story short is we do not want the replenishment fees to be used for the following program. Simple answer. Okay. And I'm not sure if that addresses what you said or not. It, it was, except that you were, okay, I understand where you're going. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Okay, seeing none, we'll bring it back to the public for any comments. Decker. I'm a representative of the Eastern Kern County Resource Conservation District, as well as a private well owner and a, a resident of the city and the water district. I have attended, I believe, all of the meetings regarding groundwater sustainability in the Indian Wells Valley since these meetings began. The replenishment fee was never publicly intended to be used for anything except replenishment of a water supply. At least, and I use the word publicly carefully because that's how it was billed with the former board that brought up and voted on this issue. At the present time, to people who are outside of the board, it appears that the replenishment fee is in fact being put into the general fund and used for a variety of expenditures. Getting water you got a grant 
for $7.6 million to plan an infrastructure project. It's to plan it. It's not to buy one piece of pipe. The cost of imported water is going to be horrendous. You need to collect the replenishment fee for those costs. Do not use it for other things. The other issue is the following program as it was presented in the GSP. It isn't a plan. It isn't a program. It's very vague. And it needs careful examination. As I have brought up before, if, uh, if farmers, large farmers such as, I'll bring up the M. Sands and Meadowbrook Dairy who have a lot of land that is currently in alfalfa. If they quit and go away, those plants are going to die. They're going to blow away in the next windstorm. The effect on the, on the base and anything else that's east of there is going to be horrendous. We have no following plan, and we certainly need to develop one, but we don't need to do it with replenishment fees. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Decker. I, if I could just in, interject one thing. Um, I, I want to make sure, and, I, and I'm not sure if this addresses what Peggy was saying earlier. Uh, we, we actually voted for the following program, all right? We, we still think that it's a reasonable thing to do, um, just not with the replenishment fee monies, all right? Um, now, there was a state grant uh, available to repurpose uh, farmland, and for some reason the GA chose not to apply for it. I believe it was like $50 million dollars. Uh, although I also understand that it's going to be up by another $50 million. And, and also, if the state is really trying to uh, furlough like a million acres, uh, that particular grant is going to go up from $100 million to uh, probably a billion dollars. So we need to keep apprised of what's going on with the state. And I believe the Capitol Court has mentioned that to us, that that was going on. And so I suggest that we jump on that the next time it is open, because again, the, the, uh, the following program is a worthwhile thing to do, is we have to keep in mind uh, with regard to the replenishment fee, what the purpose of the replenishment fee was for which we feel is sacred and should not be used for just everything. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker, please. Uh, Joshua Nugent, Mojave Pistachios. Uh, good to see everybody. Uh, I just wanted to point out a kind of one key component since everyone's talking about the, the following program and funding responsibilities and the original GSP plan. And I'm looking at our GSP page ES28, where it talks about project number five, dust control mitigation program. And I'm just gonna read this little section. I think it'll be under my two minutes. So again, this it goes to implementation of management action number one, which would be the following program. And says that management action number one will potentially result in an increase in windblown dust and sand as a result of the decreased agricultural land use, therefore requiring mitigation. Dust control mitigation is a critical component of pumping allocations and the voluntary, voluntary following program. Uh, it further goes on to say that, um, that the GA will establish a network to identify and prioritize for dust control mitigation different areas that have been voluntarily followed as part of management action number one, and that the, it will initially monitor the dust issues as the practices continue and are phased out, and it will um, monitor for windblown dust and sand and implement proactive mitigation measures as identified in the dust control mitigation plan. So again, I think it would probably be good for everyone just to kind of go back, reread the original plan, see what the DWR approved, and realize that we have some obligations and stuff that were never talked about being funded by replenishment fee or anything else. It was supposed to be one of the critical components and one of the things that's been done by this 
this board and hasn't been done. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other public speakers on this item? Okay, Peters, if I may, this is Phil Hall. Yes, sir. I'd like, to, I'd like to go back and I'd like to go back and and clear up some misconceptions that that have been said today. Presumably, I'm going to assume because you know this program is three years old at this point and has been worked on throughout throughout that time period. And and some board members weren't on the board when it was adopted. So first, the use of the replenishment fee. Use of the replenishment fee is completely legal. Uh, for the following program, if if the board so desired, uh, it's noted in the engineer's report that was voted on by the water district. They didn't vote for the fee itself, but they did vote for the engineer's report. I believe, uh, believe board member Kaczynski motioned for it, but but we'd have to go back to 2020 to figure that one out. Um, <coughs> the we should also keep in mind that when the replenishment fee was adopted at 2,000 plus acre foot, the concept and the thought was that the water district would lower its um, monthly charge to its constituents by financing that fee. And that would lower everything. There was no contemplation that the water district would charge 2,000 bucks an acre foot to its constituents rather than putting that over a 30 year period. So, um, that's one thing to keep in mind with this. The use of the replenishment fee for following, uh, some people have said, well, there's no analysis in the engineering report for that to justify what numbers you would be using. That is true because a following program that is there is a mutual program. You have to have a willing seller and a willing buyer. The only willing buyers that we would have at this stage would be the water district because they're the only long-term users of water in the basin that have an overdraft problem. Other farmers might want to buy from other farmers, but that's really a transient pool of transfer. It's not the following program. Some people have asked, well, what is the benefit to the water district if it bought, um, if it entered into a following negotiation with farmers? And there's twofold. One, um, presumably farmers wouldn't file a general groundwater adjudication, which we've now had the water district file. Two, um, you will notice that our engineering reports and our GSP says that in 43 years, this basin runs out of water. In the next 18 years, one in four wells will be damaged by overdraft. By buying some of this transient pool water through the following program, the water district would extend the period of time in which it needed import water into the basin. Um, that was what they were buying. They bought water to give them time. That was the following program. The program was designed for the then general manager of the GA, Don Zadiba, and the general manager of the water district, who, remember, is the primary purchaser of this water, really, to negotiate with the farmers and to be a part of that process. In fact, they were driving that process. Most other board members have little concern if the water district's happy with what its negotiation comes out with. When that program was adopted and approved by the water district, that was the known process for the, the path. 60 days into that path, the water district still was not taking calls, or I should say they were taking calls and not responding to them from local farmers that wanted to negotiate. And uh, at that point in time, we were told at the GA that the water district would not be involved in any following negotiations. And me and Keith had to then talk to the small farmers and, and let them know what the situation was. That then culminated in a letter being sent out to them in January of 20, 2021, informing them where we were with the position and that the water district might change its mind in the future but that's a water district choice, not ours. So to recap, yes, you can use replenishment fee for this following program. It was contemplated that we would be charging far less than $2,000 an acre foot to the water district because they would have financed their fee and would then have some money for the following program if they found a willing seller, willing buyer situation 
again, negotiated water district negotiations, water district choice to enter into it or not. And um, that's, that's that part of the program. Now we're hearing concerns about dust. That program was just buying water, buying time. Dust control mitigations aren't part of that. And dust control mitigations bring an interesting aspect. Should this community pay for the dust problems created by a farm that goes out of existence because it doesn't have water? In other words, when you start farming, should you have an exit plan for when your farm no longer has water? And I don't think the community should be paying for that. Um, but, you know, that's really a policy choice. And, and there are processes which the community can use to make a farmer pay for their dust control problems. Um, you know, of course, going to want to monitor it. You're going to want to be able to notice if a nuisance is being is occurring. Um, that's something you will need to do to, to monitor that nuisance. But correcting the nuisance is generally a landowner's issue. We've discussed this before. I, I believe at the last meeting, I wasn't here, Steve Johnson mentioned that I've, I've said this before in open sessions. And um, there's one field currently in Ridgecrest, which is kind of notorious for all the orange fencing, which proves the point. Um, the landowner needs to pay for their own dust mitigation. So... I hope I've answered all the questions. Um, if there, anybody's got any questions for me, I, I'm all, all ears. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Um, okay, Mr. Mr. Nisha, go ahead. I'd just like to make a clarification. Real quick. So, uh, again, uh, Joshua Nugent. My Am I on there? Okay, so Joshua Nugent, Mojave Pistachios. So... Again, the document that was approved by the DWR that I believe we should go back to as our source document would obviously be the groundwater sustainability plan. So when you look at uh, ES 5.1 management action number one, implementing an annual pumping allocation plan, transient pool, and following program. This is again page ES 24. It says, all, all groundwater pumpers who are producing groundwater during the 2010 to 2014 base period but are not given an annual pumping allocation will be able to receive a transient pool a single-use, non-transferable, one-time allocation of water. And then this is the key sentence here, and I think you guys should really pay attention to this, is all groundwater pumpers who are assigned a transient pool allocation may elect to enroll in a following program in which the groundwater pumper may elect to sell their transient pool allocation back to the GA, not to the water district, not to Mojave, not to anybody else. And then, again, since dust mitigation was brought up, you guys have in here as the project that the GA will, one, identify the location and magnitude for potential need of dust control, two, investigate best management practices to address windblown dust and sand, and three, implement the best pra management practices on fallowed agricultural land, C, management action number one. So again, it's in the GSP. Maybe everyone should go back and reread these sections. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, there, there is, I'm sorry, do I? Oh, no, no, not at all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, having served in the past on the East Kern Air Pollution Control District, the, the responsibility came from them. And when they decided that you were not doing as you should for your neighbors and allowing dust to go all over, it was the landowner's responsibility to take care of it. And in the discussion of how the GS, uh, the, uh, how we were going to deal with, we went back to Judy and then you were on the, I don't think you were on the board, but I think you served at the, in the 1980, I think it was 1988, the East Kern uh, Resource Conservation District developed plans for dust mitigation. And these are all right there, whether they were specifically mentioned, each one of those went with the landowner, not, the, not us. And so therefore, I think we need to look at it not as what is your responsibility or our responsibility, it is everybody's responsibility, but as the landowner, you had the first responsibility from the Air Pollution Control District, and you supported that at that time. 
Maybe not you specifically, but the RCD did. Uh, I was not on the RCD in 1988. I was on the Indian Wells Valley Water District Board of Directors in okay. 1988. However, I, I do have a couple of things I would like to add. Um, actually, I have three things. First of all, I'd like to I'd like to note if you have not seen it, I'm sure you're aware of this, Mr. Peters. Uh, Lois Henry, who has San Joaquin Water, it's a it's a journal, has written an article that several of the GAs in the Central Valley in the San Joaquin part of the Central Valley are disbanding or starting that process because of disagreement. I think you all should look that up and read it just to have the information. Last night we had a Eastern Kern County Resource Conservation District board meeting. It was brought up at that meeting that the California RCDs are looking into the following program because it will be a statewide problem. One of the things they are looking at is uh, farmers who, who do fallow their land, and apparently the word fallow is used statewide with Department of Water Resources, even though it's an incorrect use of the term. Um, so there will be a statewide dust problem. And they're looking at um, solar fields with pollinator type plants planted under the solar panels. I personally don't think it'll work anywhere, but I really don't think it will work here. But I want you to know that the California Resource Conservation Districts are looking into how to solve this problem. And it is a problem. You don't, you know, this has been a really dry, dry winter. We all know that, and we all know that the dry winter has come, or I should say spring, I guess. It's spring, right? Here I am in my thermal shirt. Uh, take a drive. Take a drive down one of the dirt roads, like go out Drummond, west of Jack's Ranch Road. Observe the countryside. You can see little sand dunes starting to form where they hit. That's in my uh, pack report, that thing. That where, they, where they hit interference like with a creosote bush or a big rock or something. You can see the sand dunes starting to form because of the dryness of, of our environment here. This is a serious, serious issue that we, you as the GA, the GA staff, the water district, the people who live here are going to have to really come to grips with. And I, I, I just wanted to point some of these things out to you. Thank you for letting me take the time to do so. Thank you. Are there any other public speakers? I have one short okay. comment. We, oh, got, I'm sorry. We got a few more. I'm Don. I'm Don Decker again. Uh, one thing that complicates this following program, uh, and I'm putting following in quotes because it's not a customary following that farmers would ordinarily consider, uh, is that. This following program has been brought about not by the farmer himself, but actually by the uh, GA and its, <clears throat> its actions. The following program is a GA plan. The farmers may ultimately agree to it, but it's not something that they generated. So the responsibility for the closeout of a farm, which is what this use of following means 
um, has to be, con you have to consider that uh, it's not something that the farmer created himself. Um, the GA's planning is the source of it. So the, the expense, who takes care of that, that dust, is a more complicated thing than it might ordinarily be. It's not clearly a farmer's problem. It, but it certainly is a community problem. And what uh, Judy just talked about, uh, the desertification that's going on, it's everywhere. And all you have to do is look. And it's been going on for years, actually. We're slowly but surely drying out. And the consequences will be indeed severe. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Are there any other public speakers? Okay, seeing none in the room, we'll go to the phones. Go ahead, caller. Hello, this is Renee Westerlusk. Um, I'm asking the GA board if they could uh, have uh, Capital Core and such an engineering uh, give input on this following and discussion and um, if they can come up with um, finding grants that would help our situation, look into that. And I I know there's that other $50 million that uh, Director Rotora talked about that was for um, helping farmers with following that that we need to look into that program as well um, i I just think we need to address this sooner than later, and I would appreciate the board to please work on the following so we don't get into a dust bowl situation. Those are my comments. Thank you Thank you. Okay. any other callers? okay. Just a reminder, once again, to have everyone speak in the microphones. I'm getting comments from WebEx attendees that they cannot hear you guys. Okay, thank you. Okay, bringing it back to the board uh, for any comments. For yes, just directors. a quick comment. Um, a quick response to Mr. Hall's lengthy statement. Uh, I can't resist. Uh, the Water District simply disagrees. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from directors? I'd like to make a comment. <clears throat> yes, sir. So as a non-voting member, uh, I, I am on the PAC, and I do remember that the PAC discussed this at length in one of our PAC meetings. And so there may be um, notes or, you know, more, more discussion available for you if you want that discussion. Because basically, we, as a, as a PAC, we just discussed, should the GA create a policy of essentially creating a soft landing for... Uh, farmers who were going to be cut off from water. And that was, you know, the, the frank part of the discussion that we had as a PAC, which is, you know, basically advisors to the board. So, you know, that's what I want to let you know. It, 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 the, the record likely exists. Um, you know, you could talk with Dave about that. So, anyhow. Thank you very much. Okay, any other comments? Okay. Um, that brings us to item number 11, and that is the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act Implementation Project Grant Funding Award, and I believe we will be hearing from uh, Jeff Simonetti. From Cap oh, I'm sorry, that would be Carol on this one. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll start us off, and, and just to... Congratulations to the Groundwater Authority. Um, and, and as you all know, last week, uh, you and Vice Chair Heyman were able to uh, attend an award ceremony. Uh, we were uh, the recipient of a $7.6 million grant from Department of Water Resources for the, uh, the Sigma implementation project. We have uh, a couple of requirements which we are, are fulfilling. We have provided the acceptance letter from staff. And I believe there's a, a draft of that in the packet. And 
DWR has also confirmed that the resolution that the board previously adopted with regard to the grant um, will suffice uh, for the uh, um, resolution required by the board. So um, we're, we're now in the process of awaiting the uh, agreement from DWR to execute that. And then um, just want to congratulate uh, the GA board, Stetson Engineers, um, the Capital Corps group. What a fine job on everybody's behalf. We, are, we have uh, the funds needed to begin our imported water project. That is the project identified for this grant, and there's a spending plan associated with it. And if, um, if, if Jeff Simonetti or uh, Steve Johnson wants to add anything, um, you know, by all means, please do. Great, thank you, Carol. Uh, I don't, I don't know if Jeff or uh, Steve. Oh, it looks like you're trying to hop on there, Jeff. I'll, I'll let you go. Yes. Good morning. Just wanted to say again, uh, congratulations to the board. Uh, I'm glad we are able to have representatives, uh, have Supervisor Peters and uh, Vice Chairman Heyman up in Sacramento to actually receive the check as well. And uh, looking forward to continuing working with you guys. So, again, congratulations on on our behalf. Thank you, sir. Uh, any other comments? Um, Steve, did you uh, want to make any comments on this? I know you um, may have some more information on this later. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is Steve. And, and I'll re re reiterate what, what, what Jeff just said. And this is, this is really, really a big step. And uh, staff did, uh, all of the staff did a lot of work um, to put the application together um, and to work with DWR staff. And then there was a bit of a hiccup that don't need to go into details, but we had to uh, double redouble the efforts to uh, make sure that DWR staff fully understood uh, where the GA is going and the work that's already been done um, in regards to importing water. So a lot of work being done has been done and, and we're, we're very proud that we were able to accomplish this um, and a compliment to uh, the capital core group. Um, very, very good guidance all along the way. And as as, as you mentioned, uh, we do have a PowerPoint under the Water Resource Manager report on this item. We'll, we'll provide some more detail uh, about the grant and what it can be used for. But So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, and uh, thank you to all the staff that worked on this. This is very exciting. I think this would be a great thing for the Groundwater Authority. So uh, we'll bring it back to the board now for any comments from board members. Okay, seeing none. Is there any member of the public that would like to comment on this item? This is Don Decker. Um, I would like to also add uh, a, a very positive uh, comment about uh, the benefit that this uh, grant will give this community. Uh, there are still a huge number of people in this community that are confused over what our water supply uh, situation really is, and they simply don't realize how desperate we really are. And the uh, imported water project is an essential part of our future. Thank you, sir. Any other public comment? Okay, any on the phones? Okay, not seeing any. Okay, that'll bring us to item number 12, and that is board review and approval of RFP release for imported water pipeline alignment study. Oh, excuse me. And will that be uh, Steve, yeah, yeah. Steve hey, that we're I, hearing from on that? Yes, I, I'll start on it. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I'll just start. I have Jeff Helsley and uh, Joseph Montoya. They're on. And uh, these are the two guys that work very, very closely with Capital Core to put this application together. I, you know, I was, I, they're the ones that get credit for this. So they're, uh, Jeff, I think Jeff's going to present the staff report on this. Just a couple of comments up front. Um, one is that um, uh, understanding this is a request for proposals for the alignment study. Um, there's no commitment by the board um, in relation to this RFP. We're looking, we're going out to get proposals for consultants uh, uh, to be retained by the board, and we'll bring that back to the board for approval, don't, we're, 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 as normal procedure, um, to to do the alignment study. Um, so, 
Uh, this particular grant um, is, as, as you can see, it's quite a bit of money. Um, there is a fairly short time span for us to do the work we, that we have under the spending plan, um, which we'll talk about in, under the Water Resource Manager Report, the work we're going to do and some of the scheduling that has to be done. Um, as part of this grant, it's an important concept is that uh, we are allowed uh, to retroactively go back to, I believe it's December, with cost associated um, that we can apply to this grant for reimbursement. Um, and with that information, Capital Core provided what I, I think is very good advice. And they said, you guys have a lot of work to do in a very short time to do it. And he said, there is a, we were very confident, especially up front, that we were going to get this grant. Um, but their advice was, you may want to get started on some things. You're going to get reimbursement. The grant looks good, but you may want to get started on seeing some things. So uh, you're, you're hearing about uh, a, a approval of the grant by the award of the grant by DWR, an acceptance letter. At the same time, you're seeing an RFP, and that's because we started working on this RFP um, several, several weeks ago uh, in anticipation to hit the ground running. So that's why you're, you're seeing it right now. The last thing I wanted to mention, because uh, we heard some, kind of some weird things, and, and, and again, um, uh, understanding the public doesn't get all the information. We try as much as we can to get all the information we can out there to the public and make it as clear as possible. Um, but a mis in case there is a misconception, this grant is not for Stetson. This grant is not for Capital Core, or it's not for GH. It's not for the attorneys. This grant is an implementation project grant. Um, we will be helping um, uh, with the GA staff um, to, to to bring people on board to do the work. There is no intention for Stetson to do any of this work that is under this implementation project grant. The alignment study will be a consultant. We are preparing an RFP for CEQA consultants to come in and do the CEQA for the pipeline. We're going to have a design consult. We have a lot of work to do, and, and we will be, our intention would be to represent you folks um, with these people doing the work, and all of it, as I mentioned, all of it will be run through uh, through the board for approval. So just with, with that clarification, Jeff, if, if, if you could uh, go ahead and uh, uh, walk through the staff report. Sure. Thank you, Steve. Uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, board members and, and uh, the public that's with us today. Um, sorry, trying to get to my agenda item number. Here we go. Yeah, as, as Steve mentioned, uh, you know we've got the notice of the award. There's a lot of work to get done. It all, it all has to get done by uh, June the 30th of 2025. So we've got essentially three years uh, to do. Uh, use all of the grant funds. Um, the first task that we, we put into the uh, grant application was an alignment alternative study. Uh, during the preparation of the GSP, we had prepared a, a conceptual alignment uh, and a, a conceptual imported water project. We actually um, did two conceptual projects. For you know, for the purpose of seeing is it feasible to get imported water? What's the level of cost for imported water? So as we're putting the GSP together, we could all be aware of of those uh, items. Uh, now we need to really have somebody uh, buckle down and uh, do a comparison of, of potential alignments, including looking at you know the uh, topography and how that would impact uh, construction and energy costs to move the water here, the different the distances for different alignments. Uh, the different environmental impact issues that might uh, occur with different alignments. Um, you know, look at right of way land ac acquisition, right of way acquisition uh, issues and costs, and and do a comparison of all those considerations uh, for different alignments to come up with a preferred alignment. Um, when we conduct uh, the study, uh, the consultant conducts the study. We'll take each one of the Results of each one of the tasks to the TAC is our intent, so the TAC can review and comment on that. Uh, when we get to some draft findings, we'll be bringing that to the board so they're aware of uh, what the study is indicating. Uh, once we get done with the alignment study and have uh, a final alignment, well, then we'll be in a position, as uh, Steve had indicated, to put out RFPs for, for design. Uh, the ma getting the major design underway and, and some of the other tasks that need to get done and get multiple consultants and start utilizing the funds to, to plan and design and 
uh, move towards being able to build the uh, imported water project. Okay. So uh, we will, you know, following the board's uh, approval, we'll uh, uh, advertise this publicly uh, so that firms can be aware of it, uh, do a review, and as Steve said, uh, we bring back uh, a recommended uh, firm for the uh, board to award the uh, contract uh, when we're done with that. We, we had put a budget in the, the grant of $170,000 for this study. I, I've been looking at it. I think it, maybe hopefully we'll get some uh, proposals that are, that are well qualified and there are less than that, but I, I think that's a, a good upper limit for this study. Um, and, and with that, I'll uh, be glad to answer any questions on the RFP. So, so, Jeff, your recommendation? Oh, yeah, we, we would recommend that the board uh, authorize the advertisement of the RFP for an alignment study for the imported water project pipeline. Great. Thank you, sir. Okay, we'll bring it back to the board for any discussion. Any comments from the board? I, I guess I have two comments or questions. Um, do we physically or not physically, in reality, have the money to spend today? Or when when will we have it so that we can spend it? Do we know? Well, we certainly, we don't have the grant funds in hand. This is a reimbursable grant. Uh, they, they won't upfront the money. Um, you know, we'll, it, it usually takes, well, they've been expediting things in their grant process. Um, two months to get a, a funding agreement in place and then we do quarterly um invoicing okay and, and then get so, reimbursed okay, so. excuse me so do we have authorization now to spend the money or go on contract to spend the money we don't have a funding agreement we have notice of the award and have, uh, okay the and when do we summary. anticipate getting the funding agreement uh, they've indicated they're working on that. I, I don't know if that's going to be in a week or, or two weeks. Yeah, it, the, the requirement to have the funding agreement in place within, I think, 28 days of the award, or 20 or 30 days of the award. So in the next two weeks, and, and working with Derek at DWR, uh, we should be seeing that funding agreement any day. Okay, great. Um, my, my one comment on the RFP itself is in the uh, attachment A, the scope of services, I look at task two, and, and to me that looks like something that we, the GA, should be giving to the contractor. Um, I, 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 uh, I think this is something that the GA has been trying to come to grips with for the last two or three years. Um, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned. I can, I can envision the contractor running in circles trying to figure out what in the hell do we really mean and who's, what numbers are we going to use? And uh, it would seem to me that if the GA were to set a parametric uh, set of numbers for upper and lower bound uh, or, or something like that, we could actually uh, get some work done a lot faster than trying to get the, the contractor to accomplish in two or three months, what we've been working on for three years. The any scope of work is that he would look at the imported water needs in conjunction with the, the um, GA's water resource manager. So we certainly didn't expect him to, you know, start from scratch with this. Our real intent was, you know, we would walk him through what we've looked at, um, you know, some of the variables that are involved. And what we really want him to do is document that into this report. Uh, as he's going forward so we can look at the demands and the need for the pipeline. Mm -hmm. But yeah, your point's well taken. And we, we work, you know, it's, yeah. it's something, something we've been all been talking about for a while. So we yeah. don't expect him to start from scratch yeah. there. Yeah. And we it's, would not, Dr. Ator, we would not anticipate uh, 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 awarding a contract and then waiting for a work product. We would anticipate very close coordination with uh the, the consultant on this uh, on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to make sure that he, that the contractors do not misunderstand the scope of what we're asking them to do because it looks a little bit like perpetual motion, um, and and um, I, I just want to make sure that 
we have him spend his time and our money on something that's going to get us a, a product. Thank you. That was all. Okay. Thank you, Director Atora. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Seeing none, uh, are there? Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Go this, ahead. This is John Leo. Uh, I do want to hear public comment on this before I give any broader comments, but. Um, I wanted to ask, and I heard uh, the intro about the timeliness issue and how we need to get moving, and I, I fully appreciate that, and it's someone informs probably the answer that I expect to receive already, but I'm wondering, is the turnaround time for responses to the RFP, do, do we feel internally that that's sufficient for reaching a broad uh, potential group of uh, potential providers here? It seems to be a pretty quick turnaround. Um, is the 30 days, I think for this kind of, of study, I think is what we've typically seen on it. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it advertised right away and, um, give them 30 days. But. Right. And, and I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just posing the question because, you know, I did note that, you know, it's, it's not just the full response within 30 days. There are initial, initial responses that are required, like the submittal of interest is within a couple of weeks, uh, asking questions, um, you know, shortly after that, and then the full response is due, you know, within 30 days. But it, it did just on its face to me not being very um, experienced in this area of timeline. It, it seemed like a quick turnaround. I just wanted to make sure we're all thinking through that, the, the idea of making sure we get enough uh, responsible bidders here. I wish more agencies that I respond to on RFPs had that consideration. Uh, yeah. When I'm on that end, I, I, I generally would like to have more time. But but as I say, th these are very standard uh, timelines that, that we as, at Stetson Engineers respond to with, with a lot of agencies. I don't think they'll have a, a problem with it, the, the other consultants. Yeah. And Director Vallejo, in addition to that, um, this is a, a, a fluid dynamic process. I mean, we'll set the guidelines. If we get a lot of pushback that people need more time to provide a, a quality, you know, represented proposal, then we will we will be working with them and, and the board um, to make sure that this is this is done right. So we, we we'll be working with these folks to make sure that they, they, they have the appropriate amount of information and time to get us a good proposal. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any other comments from the board? I have one. I, based on Director Vallejo's and Dr. Director Retora's comments, are we, are we, when we ask for this request for a proposal, are we giving them a, a scope of work or a design so that they know more fully what we're looking for? Because imported uh, a pipeline alignment study to me seems pretty pretty self-explanatory are we giving them any more than that well part part of the process of the study itself will be um you know verifying um the flow rates that are going to be needed in this pipeline you know over over a long planning period so we we start by you know, they're going to go back and verify the things that we looked at initially in the uh, preparation of the GSP, such as looking at the capacity that's available in uh, AVEX, California City Pipeline, uh, make sure that we understand whether, you know, there's a difference in, you know, seasonal availability, because that could affect, um, you know, how we need to design the facilities that get, get up to uh, Indian Wells Valley. Uh, the thought is that this could be, you know, the, really the only user for this treated imported water uh, potentially is the uh, water district. So we want to make sure that they look at when can the water district take it, where can they take it, and make sure we match up the availability at uh, AVEC with the demands at the water district and that we have all the physical facilities that are needed to do that if more storage is needed. This consultant is going to look at all those issues on sizing, uh, capacities, storage to make sure that we fit the two systems together. So it's going to be part of their responsibility to conceptually go through and, and get that more detailed design than for these for each one of the alignments than we had done um, conceptually for the GSP. 
and and they'll need to do that because one of the things we want to compare is the cost uh, when they do those alignments and those facilities. They can look at the energy requirements. We want to compare those between all of them. So they're going to be um, looking at the basic information about what we need the system to do, and then they're going to conceptually okay. do a conceptual design of of the system itself, so they know exactly. Uh, in addition to just sort of the alignment, the, the things with the facilities that affect our decision in each one of those alignments. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Any other board comments? Okay, seeing right. none, we'll, well, we'll go to the public. Um, uh, any chairman? members? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see I, it in there. I do have a question. So one of the things I've been here and observed the process of the GSP and there was basically two different uh, water sources or, you know, beginning of the pipeline proposed in GSP. And this basically assumes that AVAC would be the place where we'd start 45 miles away. Um, has there been any more discussion by the board about, um, you know, whether or not, I, I realize it's it's not preferred by Inyo County, but uh, that LADWP would be, you know, consulted on uh, whether or not it's even a, a possibility because the pipeline would be a whole lot shorter. And this RFP is is predicated on AVEC. It, it, if I could add some information on that, there there's been, has been some more technical work done um, that um, is important concerning the LA uh, DWP project. Um, we had done a review of the ability to, to percolate water into the groundwater basin. Um, the AVEC project would, would deliver untreated water. So the concept was if we got untreated water from LA Department of Water and Power, we would recharge it into the groundwater basin. So, you know, the feasibility of being able to get the water down to the groundwater table was a, a key uh, question on that project. And uh, Steve Reich and our, and our firm had done a, a review of, of available information and written up a summary of it about the ability to percolate where the locations, preferable locations might be to percolate water into the groundwater basin um, and, and took that to the to the TAC. Um, you know, and frankly, it, it wasn't very uh, favorable. The, the best part, the location that I, I think that was identified was potentially in the El Paso Basin which by itself isn't um, prohibitive, but, but even looking at that basin and our level of knowledge now and our level of confidence that we actually can percolate the water down to the water table, uh, the TAC concluded. Uh, and now in that instance, they were looking specifically, uh, more specifically at the recycled water project, you know, which had uh, a bit smaller amount of water annually that they were trying to recharge. But the TAC was in agreement that based on the information they had now, they didn't have enough confidence that it was feasible to, to really even recommend moving forward with some of the um, additional studies and field work that had been proposed for that. So, so based on you know, the, the doubts about the ability to effectively percolate water, uh, along with uh, if some of the audience members and board members may recall that with LA Department of Water and Power, we were going to do an exchange with them. We were, we're going to get state water project rights or some other water rights and exchange water with them uh, out of their system. Um, they were going to ask for, it wasn't going to be a one-for-one -one exchange. They were going to ex ask for some kind of a ratio that, and, and in initial discussions with them, they were starting it uh, for every acre foot we took out of their aqueduct, they were going to want three acre feet of um whatever water we found, state water project or whatever else it was, well, uh, that's um, at or above the break-even point for the AVEC project. If, if we're going to give them a three-to-one um, exchange, the, the cost of getting the water, of, of the water itself, the water rights, uh, added to the shorter pipeline, it's, it's about, a, I think, maybe a little more expensive. That's very close or, or above the, it's at or above the break-even point for the AVEC project. So, so based on those, we've, we've formulated and the indication from Capital Corps that for this grant, we needed to have a project. Uh, we had focused it on the AVEC project, which is feasible, uh, clearly engineeringly feasible, though expensive. 
Thank you. Okay, we'll now uh, go to public presentations. Uh, Mr. Decker. <clears throat> I'm Don Decker again. Um, this follows on what I just offered earlier about the critical <coughs> importance of the imported water project. Um, this RFP being the very first formal step in that endeavor uh, takes on, you know, the same critical importance. And I appreciate the um, uh, sense that we need to work as expeditiously as possible. Um, I think, though, that we want to not be um, too rushed. And I also suggest that... Um, there should be um, TAC involvement, as has been the case for, for previous contracts. Um, that lets the board have some public um, input directly into the process. Um, <clears throat> and basically what happens is a uh, subcommittee is formed and um, agrees to meet with the technical staff committee. Um, I think that's what I have to say for you. Um, we all are anxiously um, awaiting the progress that we can make here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, please. Yes, this is Wes Katzenstein, uh, a domestic well owner. And uh, by the way, everyone is to be congratulated on the funding that you have received and that we're trying hard to get. Uh, and what's floating around the back of my mind is the concept of system engineering. And I think what we need to, if we don't already have it, we need to have a well-defined endpoint for this seven, six million dollars, where we want to be. And I'm going to suggest that we want to be shovel ready. That would be my recommendation. I think we've had opportunities in the past to, to apply for grants for shovel ready projects. So I'm going to suggest that we need to have a clear statement of where we want to be and then there needs to be uh, what I'm going to call a system engineer, and maybe this might be Stetson or maybe someone that they might hire, but there needs to be somebody then that when we start letting RFPs, uh, we know exactly what products we expect from those RFPs and how they feed into that final product that we need to be successful at at the end of this whole thing. So uh, I think we need to be sure that, that as we let RFPs, as we spend the money, that we... From a system point of view, we know what specific products we want and how they play into the larger picture and get us to a well-defined end result that we need to be sure is defined. So that's my recommendation. And on another note, uh, do we have, has anyone talked to AVEC, do we know that if we build this pipeline that they're going to save the water for us? You know, do we have any guarantees on that? Um, I know a California city would really like to be the marijuana capital of the world. Marijuana takes a lot of water. So do we have guarantees that we'll be able to access that water, that capacity, uh, when we build our pipeline? So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any other public speakers? Uh, Mr. Jim, yes. I, you know, uh, Wes brought up the, the, you know, the idea of knowing where we're going to land, and I hadn't really thought about that. The one thing I, I did notice that really could be added to this um, uh, RFP scope of services is um, a listing of the different permits um, and, you know, sub-projects that would be needed in the future uh, because I work for the Bureau of Land Management, and you're going to need a right-of-way uh, from us, you know, a, a pretty long one. And so, you know, while, while I know that, um, this... Uh, contractor who does this could could advise you on that right up front and I, I I was just looking at it and I didn't see it in there so I just present that uh, thank you are there, are there any comments on that from Stetson yes the um, that's correct it doesn't specifically request a, a list of permits but one of the criteria that's going to be considered is, is right-of-way. Um, 
And, you know, one of the qualifications we have is that, you know, they have to they have to have somebody who's experienced with uh, right of way um, uh, acquisition and, um, and the purchases. Uh, and it, when they're comparing the different alignments, you know, if we're going through different jurisdictions, you know, how long it takes to get uh, our permitting or get our right of way. And the cost of that is the, the types of things they're going to be comparing between the alternatives. So we fully expect that they'll, that's exactly the kind of thing the, the firm's going to be able to do for us is look at, you know, BLM versus some other right of way and tell us, well, this is, you know, this is what you need to do with BLM. We'll compare it to, you know, this other right of way you're going across in a, um, in one of the other alignments and, and to tell us the pros and cons and, uh, and be able to weigh those things for us. Uh, a specific list of permits we typically would uh, come up with in the, a preliminary design report or that preliminary design process. Uh, I wanted to address one of the, if I may, one of the comments in, uh, that came, I think, from the public and, and was echoed uh, by the director just now about the end point. Um, you know, the, the DWR didn't ask us how much money we wanted uh, in this grant process. They said, this is how much is available. Um, our preliminary estimates that we haven't gone back and revised had called uh, had indicated that the planning, you know, full planning, design, and permitting for this project would be in excess of the seven point six million. Um, now, those were, you know, uh, conceptual level cost estimates we did on on planning and design and permitting. Uh, we will be working through the you know details of that as we, you know we're putting the pieces of this together to go back and, and, and look at that. And we will have a better idea of, of the end point at that time, but we're, we're basically having to work with what DWR has given us as far as the money goes. Great, thank you. Any other public comments? Chairman Michael McKin Mr. Oh. Chairman Michael McKinney, yes, to clarify on Jeff's comment, we continue to look between 750,000 and 1.5 million in additional planning fees for the interconnection project. Um, also, one clarification, in our discussions with DWR, we did not presuppose a route. We indicated that that was the board's decision and that funds from this grant would be utilized in support of the board determining a route. So we hadn't specifically stated, hey, there has to be one route designated. We said that this grant would be used to designate that route. And Stetson is in the process, of course, of building the case for which route um, that staff would recommend. But we continue to look for the planning funds for this, as well as planning funds for the water recycling project in the current budget. Um, and that's all I've got for you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comments? Okay. Seeing none in the room, we'll go to the phones. Go ahead, caller. Hi, good afternoon. This is Derek Hoffman, attorney for Meadowbrook. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, good afternoon, chairman, members of the board. Um, first, congratulations to you on the grant funding award. Um, it's always good to pursue grant funding when it's available. I do have some questions about the scope for this RFP, though, today. Uh, I know it was put out last night. I'm still reviewing it. It sounds like several board members are also still seeking to fully understand it. Um, the, when you look at the GSP, and, and board member Bickhouse mentioned this a moment ago. There were two potential pipeline project concepts. One was from AVEC, the other was through an LADWP. And as he mentioned, one is quite a bit longer than the other. AVEC is about 50 miles. Uh, LADWP is projected to be about 10 miles. And the difference in cost is, is extensive as well. Uh, the AVEC project being estimated at $180 million uh, approximately. Uh, for just capital costs alone, uh, not including water rights acquisition. Uh, for DWP, the capital costs are also extensive, but much less than AVEC at $55 million. So um, I see that the scope of services for this RFP, as has been discussed, is limited to the a studying the AVEC connection prospect. And my question is, has this board decided to abandon studying or pursuing any connection with LADWP? Uh, and if so, when was that policy decision made? Um, and if not, will the board be studying an alignment and putting out a similar RFP for uh, studying an LADWP connection, given the extensive differences in the cost between the two prospects? 
And we appreciate hearing any response to those questions today, please. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. And anybody care to respond to that? I feel like that's already all those points have been addressed previously, but I don't know if anybody else would like to reiterate. I, I would agree, Mr. Chairman. I think Jeff answered most of those questions. Um, okay, perfect. I, I believe these, uh, you know, there was some discussion on, on these types of issues too when the grant application was brought to the board. The, the scope of work at that time indicated the AVEC route and um, when those issues were discussed. Okay. Yeah, and this is where. We're heading into probably potentially closed session type stuff, but there are ongoing discussions um, uh, for water supply from this particular route, whereas there are not any other. Now, uh, that's not to say that LADWP and the aqueduct and exchange is completely off the table. If a if a, a project were to come along, I'm sure that we, we all will be uh, interested in considering it. Thank you. Okay, next caller, please. Go ahead, caller. Hey, this is Mike Sanat. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I'm also calling about the LADWP connection. Um, I think you're making a big mistake if you don't include that as an option in the scope of work or an alternative project. Um, <clears throat> there's reason to do this with regards to the area of the Brown Road um, farming and the potential alignment for water coming in from the northeast portion of the valley. So I would like to um, suggest that you add this as an alignment and a study as an alternative and um, include that in the RFP. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, please. Caller, go ahead. Hello, this is Renee Westerlusk. Um, I, I want the clarification uh, done regarding, it says, selection process um, in the RFP document uh, that the GA, IWV GA will review the, the request for proposal. Who is actually going to do that? Um, I assume it's Stetson Engineering. And then I also want to um, congratulate the, the Groundwater Authority, Stetson Engineering, and Capital Corps for getting the $7.6 million grant. It's greatly appreciated. Those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any more callers? Okay. Seeing none. Uh, we'll bring it back to the board for any final comments. Any of the board members? Yeah, this is uh, John Vallejo. Um, yes, sir. Go ahead. I think at this point, unless there's any other uh, discussion that the board wants to have, I'll move for. Uh, I'll, I'll make the recommended. I'll, I'll move to approve the recommended uh, action from staff. Thank you, Director Vallejo. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Vice Chair Breeden. Chairman Peters. Aye. Vice Chair Breeden. Aye. Director Itnayer. Aye. Director Retora. Aye. Director Vallejo. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, our next item is item number 13, a report from the Water Resource Manager. And for that, I will uh, call again on uh, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and to the board. Thank you for uh, for this uh, the go ahead on this RFP. 
We are definitely hitting the ground running, and um, we'll be working with the board and certainly the GA staff all through this. And as Don Decker uh, uh, indicated, through the TAC. Um, uh, actually, I have uh, an item that's not listed, and that is because we don't have the TAC or PAC. We have no, no report for either of, uh, of those committees on this agenda, but I will just mention that um, we internally have been working on, and we have sent some things to the TAC. We internally have been working on topics for the TAC. Uh, we have many. Um, we're, uh, uh, Gene's going to report on our work with the uh, uh, with the CMP for the model, for the DRI Navy model, for transfer of the model, and our technical modeling group. Uh, and there's overlap on those two groups on technical issues that are coming up. So there's stuff coming. Uh, and just be patient at the TAC. We're going to be sending some, some uh some important material to you folks. So, so that's coming. I would ask, uh, like we've done before, as we go through the water resource manager report, um, they let us get through the whole thing and then we'll come back and answer questions so we can kind of keep this thing moving. Um, Joseph is on. Joseph will cover uh, the grant funding. Uh, we do have a, uh, a PowerPoint on this particular $7.6 million grant, which he'll walk through and, and, and provide a little bit of repetition, but but it'd still be good. And then uh, and recycle water. And then Jean's on the wall. Jean Moran's on, and she has several items to to update on. So Joseph, if you're ready. Yes, thank you, Steve. Good afternoon, members of the board and members of the public. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Thank you. Great, thank you. So starting with uh, item 13A1, the Prop One status update. Uh, just a brief update here. We have two outstanding invoices uh, left to be paid, um, number 12A in the amount of $132,693.95, and invoice 13A in the amount of $299.70. Uh, those invoices have both been approved. We are currently awaiting uh, reimbursement from DWR for those two invoices. Um, and if you'll recall, I've, we have received some questions on invoice number 12A, um, and just for uh, background information, this invoice covers the period from July through September of last year. The actual work uh, that occurred during that period um, totaled to a little under $2,000, but uh, included also in this invoice was uh, costs that were removed from invoices 8A and 9A uh, for the purposes of fulfilling uh, CEQA concurrence as part of our funding agreement. Uh, and those costs totaled about $130,000. So those invoices are part of invoice 12A. Um, but again, this invoice has been approved and we will be looking for reimbursement shortly from DWR. And lastly, for this update, um, we are in the process of preparing another invoice and progress report package, number 14, that will be due at the end of this month, covering January through March of this year. I mean, two other notes on the Prop 1 update that aren't on this slide, but I did want to bring up to the board. Um, we did recently execute a funding agreement amendment under Prop 1 and Prop 68, um, and included in that amendment was additional work that uh, the California Rural Water Association, the consultant uh, responsible for the program for severely disadvantaged communities, um, additional work that they will be doing under this grant. So we're anticipating that uh, for the last few invoices that we have under this grant, they will be a lot more than the previous invoices as far as amounts. Um, and the second note that I had was that we are currently working on completion reports for some of the components of our grant that are finished. Uh, we don't really have a deadline set by DWR for when those completion reports are to be um, furnished to DWR but we're hoping to assemble those reports in the next few months uh, because we are moving close to a uh, final grant closeout, which will be occurring at the end of this year. So we'll be, again, we'll be continuing to turn those reports out to fulfill all the requirements of our funding agreements. Now, moving on to 13A2, the Prop 68 status update. Uh, again, a brief update here. We also have two outstanding invoices that have been approved by DWR, and we are just awaiting uh, the reimbursement checks for those. And again, we have a new invoice in progress report 14 that we'll be preparing at the end of this month as well. Um, now, just before I move on to the uh, next item, the Sigma implementation grant update, I just wanna say that in 
the next board meeting uh, for June, we will be returning with an updated table of the Prop 1 and the Prop 68 invoice totals and the payments that we received for those invoices, just to keep the board informed about where we're at as far as what grant funding we have left under these two grants and what has been received as far as reimbursement from DWR. So we'll be returning to the board in June with an update on those tables. So next is the Sigma implementation grant overview. Again, as Steve mentioned, a lot of this information was previously discussed in other agenda items, but again, we did, uh, the Groundwater Authority did receive a notice of award on April 28th of the $7.6 million for the imported water interconnection project. Um, as Steve and Jeff laid out, some of the eligible grant activities that will be occurring under this grant will be the pipeline alignment study, um, additional design and planning, um, environmental compliance, which would include preparation of appropriate CEQA and uh, NEPA documentation, whether it's a mitigated negative declaration or an EIR. Um, that will be determined at a later date. Uh, permitting and right-of-way coordination, negotiation, and acquisition will be a big part in getting us to that $7.6 million. Uh, any coordination with partnering agencies, including AVEC, um, some of the agencies that will have right-of-way that we'll need to negotiate along the pipeline alignment. And then Stetson, we do anticipate Stetson having a big role in administering and managing the grant working with DWR on fulfilling the requirements of the grant agreement, which would include uh, preparing quarterly invoices and progress reports, furnishing all deliverables, and completing all other requirements of the grant. And as Steve mentioned, we can go back as far as December of last year to request reimbursement for any work that fell under the imported water project. We have a tentative end date of June 2025, that will be confirmed in our funding agreement, which I believe, as Carol mentioned, we are waiting for that, and we hope to expect a draft for staff to review in the next couple of weeks or so. Um, so just current work tasks that we'll be um, moving forward with is, again, uh, advertising the RFP for the pipeline alignment study. Um, as Steve mentioned, we'll be procuring a number of other consultants to handle some of the other aspects of this grant, like environmental compliance and design. So we'll be preparing RFPs to bring on consultants for those tasks. Um, we are planning to have a staff team coordination meeting to just go over the logistics of how uh, grant management will occur and what our tentative schedule is for making sure that we reach uh, whatever end date we have in mind for this grant. Um, and before I move on to the next item, I will also say that uh, we will anticipate giving monthly updates to the board on this grant, similar to what we are doing right now with the Prop 1 and the Prop 68 grants. We'll be giving monthly updates on uh, the grant itself, any of the work that's occurring under it, and then any invoicing and um, reimbursement status as well. So uh, last for me is the Item 13B1, the Recycled Water Program update. Um, again, I have a very brief update on this. As I believe Steve reported at the last meeting, we, uh, the technical team for the Recycled Water effort met in early April uh, to go over the additional evaluation and screening of the alternatives for recycled water use that are being considered under the study. Uh, the technical team has decided to move forward with um, injection as the most favorable and feasible alternative for recycled water use. Uh, we are in the process of finalizing a section of this analysis to sort of document the team's process in coming to that conclusion as far as where we're recommending going for injection. Um, so we plan to release that section to our technical team for review uh, within the next week or so. That section is being reviewed internally right now. Um, as far as next steps for this analysis and looking forward to where we're going to end up as far as a recycled water project, um, once we release this section to the technical team, we're hoping to schedule a meeting with the regional board um, to ask for their input on what an injection project could look like in this basin and any 
water quality needs or concerns that they see for injection. Um, we're also working to define the injection project, so to speak, in terms of um, look, possible locations for an injection well, uh, additional treatment needs that won't be met by the city as part of their wastewater treatment upgrade effort, um, any storage needs, and other facility information that we'll need to start a preliminary design. And part of that will also be looking at uh, the injection locations is looking at locations of other production wells within the basin to make sure we have an appropriate buffer uh, between the injection well and other production wells. Um, as far as other next steps, we're continuing to coordinate with Capital Corps on potential grant funding opportunities for recycled water. And we're hoping to have a tech memo um, sometime later this year with the results of our analysis and how to proceed with uh, eventually moving towards design for this project. So with that, that's all I have for this update, Steve. Great, great. Thank you, Joseph. I'll, I'll just mention one last thing on this uh, implement, implementation project grant funding. Um, and this is just uh, a, a, a information for the board and, and, the, and the public. Um, through this process of these grants, especially this particular one, um, we have had to work very, very close with DWR uh, uh, staff and I think it's a good it's a good report. I think our relationship with DWR staff is very very good right now. I'll let you know. I mentioned a hiccup earlier. There uh, there was some some uh, negative forces um, being applied to DWR staff in regards to um, this grant um, application. And I would say this is just my words. I would say uh, and the success of this groundwater authority and. DWR staff is sensitive to those things, and uh, they 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 took a step back and coordinated. We coordinate. We put a, an effort in to coordinate with them and let them know know exactly where we're at, what we're doing, and where we're going. And uh, I'll just say, I think our relationship with DWR staff is very good um, for this particular grant, uh, for the pre previous grants, and for grants and implementation of grants going forward. So I, I'll just add that. And um, next uh, we have is Jean Moran on on her update. Jean. Good afternoon, uh, members of the board and the public. I'm just checking to make sure that you can hear me. Yes, we can. Okay, great. So I am going to cover about four uh, specific items. The first one is the groundwater dependent ecosystems. Uh, this is a data gap in our monitoring program that's required for the uh, groundwater sustainability plan. And we had gone out last summer to a number of sites that did not have groundwater dependent vegetation on them. Uh, recently, the Navy's biologists went out to look at vegetation in the spring uh, to identify potential locations. Uh, he said that he would be able to give us um, two potential monitoring sites about May 20th. So we're waiting to get his report. And then the next steps will be to see where nearby groundwater monitoring wells are and how to develop these sites as GDE, uh, for GDE monitoring. Uh, the next slide. We're also continuing to work on uh, monitoring the subflow from Rose Valley that flows uh, just south of by Little Lake and comes into Indian Wells Valley. We are currently preparing a subcontractor bid package and that will go to the GA lawyer for review. And we are also, once we um, understand what the new bid will be given inflation, uh, we will complete the contracting with the Navy. We're tentatively planning on drilling and construction of two monitoring wells uh, in the fall of 2022. One other item that we are working on is have, uh, getting access in that area to some old sawmill wells that are on California state lands. Uh, we have been working with uh, the California state lands 
um, to get a permit to look at some wells up in that area. The next slide. The GSP model is in a process called the Configuration Management Plan that was uh, requested by the Navy for using uh, the model. We had a call with the Navy's representative and with uh, DRI's representative on April 19th, and we basically introduced everyone because that they were people were new to each other. We went through a background of the model and how it was used for the GSP. We reviewed the configuration management plan. It's a document. Um, and what the roles were and responsibilities for the different members of uh, this group. And then we also looked at a timeline for uh, developing the GSP model to address the five-year GSP report, which is due in January of 2025. On May 6th, just last Friday, we had a second technical meeting with uh, the Navy and DRI, and we put together a prioritized technical document to be reviewed for this group. So basically what the configuration management plan is, is a way in which to um, evaluate new data or any technical data for inclusion into the groundwater model. Uh, and the process becomes a technical model group reviews the data, makes recommendations of what should be included in the model, and then uh, Desert Research Institute would come up with a budget of what that would require. That goes to the board to review and evaluate um, which revisions should be made and costs should be incurred for updating the model and then it goes back to this group. Uh, so we are just at two meetings so far. The third meeting is we are um, putting together the technical model group. Uh, we were hoping to have a call with them uh, earlier this week, but uh, some members were, were still getting their schedules cleared on it. Uh, but at the next uh, board meeting, we should be able to report on uh, the full technical model group meeting. The next slide. Uh, this is more, this slide is more a for your information. On the Sigma website, there is a place for anyone in the public or anyone to report if there is a dry, shallow well. Uh, we came upon this uh, recently and wanted to advise the board that four domestic wells were reported by others and posted on this website. I'm not sure exactly when they were posted, but when they have uh, reported as dry is anywhere between July 2016 and February 2020. Uh, we looked up the well depths, and two, we did not have any uh, real information on well construction. And the other two wells were roughly 260 and 300 feet below ground surface. Uh, we put together a map for the board so that you can see where these wells are located. Uh, this is uh, mostly... For information, we have a call in to the people that manage the Sigma website um, just to find out if we could if we could find out anything more about these wells. And that's all that I have for this board meeting. Thank you, Jean. So, so uh, Mr. John, I think we're ready for any comments or questions. Okay, thank you. We'll bring it back to the board for any comments. Um, yes, I have a, a question. Um, at the last meeting, I, I believe we were told that uh, Stetson was now looking at two different uh, methodologies for measuring the change to groundwater uh, in storage. 
and I was wondering if there was any new information uh, relative to progress being made on either the older Thiessen polygon technique or the new technique, which I guess we don't really know what it's called yet. Uh, yes, we have been working on that uh, with the hydrogeologists, and we are planning on uh, giving something to the TAC uh, later this summer with uh, a couple methodologies for calculating storage. We want to make sure that we get the methods squared away prior to the time that the annual report needs to be reviewed. Okay, as, as I mentioned earlier today during the board comment, the Water District considers um, the ability to do this measurement a critical sustainability indicator, and we would like to have that uh, progress uh, spoken to at each of our monthly meetings so we can keep you up to speed at least until we feel that we've got uh, this thing under control. Um, it's, it's just vital uh, that we understand this and, and we're way behind. I don't know if you agree with that or not, but as far as the Water District is concerned, uh, it, we're way behind and we need to put the emphasis on this, uh, including getting information back from you as to where we stand. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? I, I would just point out, Mr. Chairman, that uh, Tim Parker, representing the Water District, Water District is on the tack, and he'll be included in this. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Any public comments? <clears throat> Don Decker, um, I would like to strongly suggest that for the um, 7.6 million grant uh, activity, given especially that a number of subcontracts will be involved, that the planning and the scheduling and the funding be uh, managed with a um, piece of software like Microsoft uh, Project, you end up with something that uh, resembles the POM that POAM that many of us have been pushing for for a long time. Uh, this is a perfect example of a project that has enough complexity that it deserves the attention that a uh, software management system is absolutely uh, recommended. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, uh, any callers? Um, I, I guess I would like to second what Dr. Decker just said, but I, I, I would expect that the contractor who gets the RFP would have scheduling software uh, that he could use, uh, and, and I guess I would suggest that maybe um, as part of the RFP evaluation that we look closely at making sure that there is a schedule uh, and that uh, that the contractor can post progress uh, against that schedule. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from board members? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll move to item number 14, which is the general manager's report, and I will turn it back over to Carol. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have in the packet the financials for April. And, and if you have any questions, let me know, but um, all looking pretty good, very straightforward. We also have, um, well, I guess let me pause there um, before I move on. Any questions? I'm not seeing any. Okay. Um, there is also a brief report from Capital Core Group, and um, we've already heard from them uh, some matters that they're working on on our behalf. Um, the 
uh, Senate bill and um, the budget requests for the wastewater treatment plant. And uh, I think uh, Jeff and Michael are on the line if anybody wants to ask any specific questions of them. Um, also, they continue to work on uh, potential water purchases for us. Are, are there any questions for Capital Corp before we move on? Not seeing any. Okay. Um, and so item C is uh, the SDAC program. Uh, Joseph just spoke about that uh, under the Water Resource Manager's report. We've begun work again on that program, extended the um, the the work plan through October, and uh, we're happy to see uh, Cal Water, excuse me, Cal Rural Water Association um, back to work with some of our smaller communities. Um, there's some progress reports in the packet. What we're seeing is um, they're continuing in some areas with the leak detection. They've also got some uh, some additional aspects to the work plan, including helping these small systems with water conservation planning, uh, drought management and resilience planning, and uh, also um, meter replacements and meter change out programs. So um, some really good work and uh, happy to see that moving again. And then finally, just wanted to give you a quick update on the audit. We do have uh, the draft audit, our uh, finance, excuse me, Financial specialist is reviewing it along uh, with the auditor, the audit staff, and we do expect to have the final audit on the agenda for the June meeting. So um, with that, that concludes my report. Are there any questions? Thank you, Carol. Any, any questions from the board? No, I'm not seeing any. Uh, are there any members of the public that would like to comment on the general manager's report? Okay. Seeing none, uh, we'll go to the phones. Uh, do we have a caller? Go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. Uh, yes, I just have a question for Carol. If this is this is Renee Westerlas, I um, wanted to know if we need more information on those financial reports who do we call um you can you can call april you can call me if we're not able to answer it we can certainly get additional information for you but uh either april or i can certainly help you okay thank you mm -hmm. thank you any other callers okay seeing none uh, that uh, brings us to the end of our meeting, and having no more items to consider, we will adjourn until June 8th, 2022. And we are adjourned. <laughs>